Joining me now in studio to offer his insights into the sex abuse crisis here in the U.S. and how the United States bishops are responding is our friend Bishop Robert Morlino from Madison, Wisconsin. Thank you for being here. Nice Great to have you on to set. You, Raymond. It's I'm glad you could come here. and join us in the in my. It, now you're in my church. Yes. It ain't much. Anyway, uh, let's start you with have a beautiful chapel. Well, I oh, do. Yeah. Well, we do have a pretty chapel down the hall. Nice mm -hmm. in my studio, but we'll get into that later. Very nice. Let's talk for a second about. Uh, this sex abuse crisis. You wrote several weeks ago about we've lost our hatred of sin. What does that mean? Well, Scripture tells us that the fear of the Lord is hatred of sin. Mm. And the fear of the Lord is a gift that we all receive at confirmation. So we have it. And we should ask the Lord to stir up that gift. It's kind of become the forgotten gift because even in the rite of confirmation for a while, we didn't speak of fear of the Lord. We spoke of wonder and awe in God's presence, mm -hmm. which is very nice. But that's only one tiny aspect of fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the book of Proverbs says clearly fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil. Mm. And that's so because one so appreciates the goodness of God, like Job, right. that one can lose everything else. Mm. And uh, because what they're losing is what could lead them into sin. Mm. And if they hate evil, they can lose it. Um, I remember Pope Benedict saying, the Lord will never ask you to give up anything that will hurt you. If he asks you to give it up, it'll be for your good. So give it up. Yeah, and evil is one of those things we have mm -hmm. to give up. Uh, I want to get your opinion on a new Pew Research poll that just came out this mm -hmm. week. Catholics, by a two-to-one margin, are giving the Pope negative ratings for his handling of the sex abuse crisis. The numbers went down from like 54 percent support in 2014 to now about 34 percent. To what do you attribute that? And in the mind of Catholics in your diocese and elsewhere, is the Pope doing enough to stem this crisis or respond to it in the way that they are, are, are desirous of? Well, I would say two things. I think the people who were surveyed in this poll are um, heavily influenced by the mass media. Mm -hmm. And that Philadelphia summary mm -hmm. uh, that came out from their attorney general has been presented far and wide in a certain light. And I think that people, from that instance, they learn the whole picture, they think. Mm -hmm. But you can't learn the whole picture from that instance. Right. Things are very seriously wrong. But that's not the end of the story. But right now, we have to respond to things that are seriously wrong. And we cannot, because it's not the end of the story, the resurrection victory of Jesus Christ is the end of the story. But because it's not the end of the story, we can't say, well, then, we'll just wait right. for Jesus. We have to do our part. Right. We have to pray hard that the Lord will fill us with his grace, and then we have to do our part in this. So what should people be doing? And I, I you know, in, in that sense, um, I am somewhat disappointed in the Pope's um, lack of initiative to help the American bishops mm. do a, an investigation with authority. Mm. Now I'm hoping that that permission will still come. Mm. And uh, you, you would encourage your confreres to keep knocking on the door and asking yes, and for I, that permission to, to investigate McCarrick, a Vatican investigation of the McCarrick situation. And so much more. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't want either to isolate this right. to that instance because I'm much more concerned now 
about situations that might be continuing mm -hmm. than I am about that one which has been stopped. Right. I mean, with that one, justice should be done according to God's will. Yeah. But there are other situations that continue and that simply have to be stopped because we're going to lose seminarians if they don't stop. And we're possibly going to have a RICO suit filed against the church by some attorney general somewhere mm -hmm. that may well not succeed. Yeah. But it will well, see uh, th th that's why I keep hearing people say well open all the files the files are dead letters yes. not only are the victims in many cases gone but the perps are gone too I'm more concerned about what's happening today they, exactly. and not f little children because most of the charges coming forward it's it's infinitesimal point two point three percent no, of the abuse right. cases are of minors we're talking about adults consenting adults in yes. some cases and double lives being led by clergy right. and bishops in particular. But how That's do right. you as a bishop, how does the conference, you really don't have to, we were talking to Cardinal Mueller, you have no authority to fraternally no. correct or in any way discipline your brother bishops. You can't do it. No, and uh, nor, nor can I speak for the conference. Yeah. But I'll be you know, happy to speak for myself. I think we really do need a systematic investigation I suppose of every uh, diocese's files mm. could take forever, could cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a necessary uh, moment in our purification at this time. I think we've got to get the whole truth out there. Mm. And there's no one that's going to come out of that simply unscathed. Mm. Because, as I said recently, if they can't get anything else, they'll pull out my high school yearbook <laughs> and see what they can find in there about me. <laughs> but there's no one that's going to come you out didn't, of I this. know you're a Jesuit, but you didn't go to Georgetown Prep with Kavanaugh, perchance, did you? No, no. You no. Weren't, that wasn't you. I oh, went yeah. to Scranton Prep. Oh, okay. And I'm proud of it. Flipping through that yearbook when, when the broadcast ends. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. Beer Nin kegs 19, and blenders as far as the eye can see. 64, you look it right up. Okay, we will. We shall. We're going to do a full investigation. <laughs> you wait. I want to move on. Speaking of youthful indiscretions, let's talk about the Youth Synod, which opened in Rome this week. Yeah. Um, Cardinal, uh, Archbishop Chaput, one of the Synod Fathers, came out swinging early on and said this document is not correct it its ecclesiology is off the its 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 theology is off we should re-examine this the head of the the secretary general of this uh, synod came out and said we're not changing a word of it he had plenty of ample time to change it what is your take on this the direction of the synod and the whole notion that we can have these occasional reopenings of church teaching with magisterial weight almost like mini vatican councils your thought first on the Youth Synod, then of the ongoing synod, synodal well, you, process. You may recall that uh, uh, you asked me a question of similar focus the last time we were together. I do. I was in Madison. And I said to you, it's not up to me, and I'm not presuming to correct anybody, but if it were up to me, I would cancel the synod. Mm. And uh, I said that independently of Archbishop Chapu, I didn't know at the time. And of course, the fact that I wind up agreeing with him mm -hmm. makes me feel better about things, honestly. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we are in a particularly difficult point to try to address youth in a serious way when we seem to be stalemated in addressing this crisis mm -hmm that victimizes so many young people, not necessarily little children, right. but so many young people. And to see that that topic is not even on the docket for the Synod. Yeah. Now, Bishop Cajano has been speaking, he's one of the delegates, right. he's been speaking forcefully lately that he thinks it should be on the docket. Maybe it will be on the docket. But uh, I, I think that it, it's a very dangerous, 
because if we should carry the Senate out and avoid that topic completely, I don't know if it is realized at very high levels the rage and the anger of the people in the United States. And around the world. German, the Germans and, aren't too happy either. I no, mean. and around the world. But particularly the people in the United States who would habitually mm -hmm. lay down their lives to defend a bishop mm -hmm. are furious. Yeah. They're just furious about this. They're furious about the inaction. We can wind up losing their support, we can wind up having the state, the, the state government or the federal government even interfere in the operations of the church, which would be disastrous canonically. Mm. The, the stakes are so high, and I really think that there has to be a response. Mm. I only have two minutes, but I have to ask you this. There was another story this week. A group of Catholics, whom, some of whom I've never heard of, who are assembling something called the Better Governance, Better Church Governance uh, Committee, and they are going to send investigators out all over the world to investigate cardinals and come up with something they're calling the Red Hat Report, which will be sort of like a, 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 a Yelp a review of every cardinal and how they feel he fits on the spectrum mm -hmm. of orthodoxy. Your thoughts on that effort? People are going to spend, apparently, heavy coin to make it happen. I have a concern that since the uh, bishops, the cardinals, the dioceses will not be obliged to turn everything over, mm -hmm. I have a fear that everything won't be turned over very honestly. And that as a result, what they come up with may wind up being very partial. Mm -hmm. And uh, to repeat what I said a few minutes ago, I suppose these investigators, if they're not getting enough from the files, which they should have, mm -hmm. they'll go back to the yearbooks. And where will that leave us? Yeah. Bishop Morlino, thank you as always for being here. And uh, if if I if I'm if I have anything to do with the Red Hat report, I'll make sure yours has no yearbook mentions at all. We'll we'll clean that right up for you. You can follow Bishop Morlino's columns and letters at the madisondiocese.org site.